Back towards the beginning of this year, we actually took a look at potatoes, everyone. They were small, seemingly insignificant crops that actually turned out to be some of the best, most efficient foods in this entire game. And while today's showcase likely won't truly match the grandeur of the taters, there is another food out there that deserves mention. Kelp fronds. From easily accessible spawning locations to incredibly fast drying methods, kelp fronds may just become your new go-to snack. Let's discuss. And we'll start with where to find the wet, slimy green stuff. What we are actually looking for are called bull kelps. And for the most part, groups of seven or more are dotted all about the coastal oceans. The parts of the ocean nearest land, mind you. With world generations varying for everyone, and with lone bull kelps floating around, there's really no telling how many will be around for you, nor how close they will be to land. But there is always another surefire option. The rocky beach biomes of the Land of Loons, aka the Lunar Islands, folks. As we'll come to find today, both the rocky beach itself and the lunar archipelago are by far the best place to gather loads of kelp. But I will mention one other method here. Sailing the bull kelp to shore. Now, I'm not sure if there is a method to the madness that I am just unaware of, or if this process is actually as annoying as it looks and seems. Or both. But I gotta tell ya, this doesn't seem worth the time or effort needed to make it happen, even if there is a better method. So if someone does this well enough to actually share their method and have it be worth it, then I'm all ears. But as for me, I'm hitting the beach, the rocky beach. For you see, there's ocean bull kelp as we just saw, and then there's beached bull kelp. The stuff is incredibly abundant, however again, world generation will have its way. But if you are looking for two birds one stone sort of deal with both the source of it and the resource overall, the rocky beach is absolutely the way to go for kelp fronds. Grab what you can, but perhaps don't head back to the mainland quite yet. Because there is one more place to check out that is also chock full of bull. The Lunar Archipelago. Even though they can contain the turf and boulders of the lunar mines, they still fall under the rocky beach biome. So kelp plenty is here, folks. Cover the island proper, and then these small additions, and I promise you, you'll be swimming in the green stuff. But before we head back, there is actually one final thing to mention about bull kelp. They are actually a set of melee weapons. Bull kelp stalks can be planted, yes, and this should absolutely take high priority. However, equip one, perhaps, to slap some mob silly at least for a short while. Using a stalk is like a whip. However, each use reduces the freshness of the stalk by two to 4% each hit, eventually getting to below 50%, which in turn gives each attack after that a 10% chance to break the stalk entirely. So yeah, they suck, so don't waste them like this. Then again, why are we planting them anyways? As I gotta be honest, Beard, Kelp fronds don't really strike me as being overly, well, anything, let alone worthy of their own video. And fair enough, friend, but hear the rest of this video out. Bull kelp itself takes but three days to regrow once transplanted and subsequently picked over time, all the while continuously growing throughout winter. Not bad. Even if the stats of both raw and cooked kelp fronds won't really be winning us any prizes at the end of the day. But that's because a frond's true purpose is to be dried, and they do so in but 0.25 days. Far faster than anything else in the entire Don't Starve franchise, and it's not even close. Now, Dried kelp fronds will look to restore 1 health, 9.375 hunger, unless your word of course, and 10 sanity each bite. And while that may sound underwhelming, you have to remember just how easy and efficient the harvesting process is and will become, and how often you'll be able to do it in general once you transplant them. Once again, 
Think of them as your new snack, not really your go-to overall food. However, it's still best to know what other foods will become more accessible with kelp fronds at the ready. If they themselves aren't really doing for you at the end of the day. And California rolls are whipped up via kelp fronds and fish. And will restore 20 health, nearly 40 hunger, and 10 sanity each. So yes, here comes the easy and efficient stuff. Not bad. But actually, there is a less efficient thing, and that is barnacle nigiri. With a kelp frond, a barnacle, an egg, and a filler, one can enjoy a food that will grant 40 health, 37.5 hunger, and 5 sanity a much. If you can manage harvesting and farming barnacles for it, then this is a pretty good option. However, I'd really stick to just making California rolls over and over and over again. But to wrap up today, some other kelp frond crafts, like the sea wreath here. Always available from the very get-go, the sea wreath is a clothing item that drains our sanities by 1.33 per minute when worn, making it essentially a garland in reverse. These are really only meant to act as an easy way to lower lunacy on a lunar island, but hey, their thing. 20 kelp fronds are needed to turn the DIY royalty kits into the true royal tapestry. And doing so has actually reminded me of one last source of the green stuff. That being the fat fish himself, aka the king of the merms. Trading him fish eel, or ocean fish leads to a bunch of smaller resource items and trinkets. However, there is also a 29% chance to receive 2 to 4 kelp fronds per trade. So, take advantage. This is not a bad trade at the end of the day, if you know how to use them. Know what is bad, however? The Strident Trident, our last item of the day. Not only is it extremely expensive and annoying to make, with requiring three narwhal horns, we can't even access the craft unless we find and kill the Crab King for Pete's sake. Another thing that is overly bad and annoying. That all said though, for those who don't actually know what it all does, the Strident Trident is a melee weapon that will deal 27.2 damage while you're on land and 68 damage if you're sailing out on the water. Plus, it's got 150 uses, which ain't too shabby. However, by the time you're killing the Crab King, chances are you have better stuff to begin with. The thing also comes with spell usage that can only be activated on the water, mind you. This spell shoots four geysers out from under the water and not only damages mods for 85 damage, which is very significant, it pushes objects that are floating atop the water themselves. This is all fun and dandy. However, the one thing that would truly be useful for this is off limits and yup, you guessed it, it's frickin' bull kelp of all things. So dumb. Funny enough, the spell can also be used to launch fish out of the water and onto land, potentially without having you having to go fishing for them yourself, which is kinda neat. But finally, the spell can be used to instantly destroy sea stacks and salt formations while sailing on the water, which I'll admit is very, very handy in keeping you and your boat all the more safe-like. So, there you go. And there you have it, everyone. A quickish bit guide thing on kelp fronds in Don't Starve Together, which actually didn't turn out to be all that quick, but what have you. As I said, though, maybe not as eye-opening as the potato video, but still a valid excuse for a video nonetheless. If you use these properly and get enough, they really, really can go a long way for ya. But thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Get that green, and I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.